nonetheless, about 22% of shipping volumes are handled through Switzerland and for the most part through Geneva. So again, just re to reinforce the, the message here that you know this is uh, uh, this is the real commodity hub for global operations. Um, I threw a few numbers at you that, of course, you know, this morning we'll be talking about uh, commodity trade finance. Geneva has its long uh, story uh, banking history, um, and naturally, you know, to say, you know, Geneva has to become the centre of excellence, not only, of course, for commodity trade finance, but also for certification and inspection services, and for other services related uh, to the commodity trading industry. And I know quite a few of you here today represent the service providers, and we're very glad to have you here with us, bolstering the, the sector. Um, but for all the talk of you know, the strength of the Geneva hub, um, I think it's very important also to, to realize uh, that there are some pretty momentous shifts that are coming our way. Uh, and I think the scene is rapidly changing, and eventually this is where STSA comes in. Um, now you'd like to think that, yes, you know, traders have a knack for staying abreast of fast-changing environments and identifying opportunities. Uh, I think that's very true. We heard yesterday that many segments of the energy uh, commodity markets are changing very rapidly, uh, if not very drastically as well. Um, so uh, this is interesting, and uh, clearly we can see the impact on volatility, uh, on the visibility of uh, market through market operators, how this is impacting the value chain as well. Um, but from, from my perspective, making sense of the markets is one thing, uh, defending the industry is, is another. Uh, and here I'm going to read from my, my speech here. Uh, but for a long time, like, and I think most of you will agree here with me, for a long time, governments and regulators have impacted, either directly or indirectly, commodity markets. Now we're at a new stage, we're at we've entered a new phase where, in fact, governments and regulators are impacting the way traders do their business. And this is not at all the same thing. And this is something I think that the, the industry as a whole has started to wake up to. Um, and this is why we're seeing more and more interest in sector associations. Uh, you know, we heard uh, briefly about the Commodity Club yesterday. Uh, SDSA, of course, is, is, is the umbrella association here representing the entire sector. You have to understand that even as early as two years ago, there was no Swiss Trading and Shipping Association. There was a Geneva Trading and Shipping Association. There was an association of commodity traders in Zug, which is one of the regional hubs of Switzerland. And there was another one in, in Lugano, um, in Ticino. Uh, but I think people understand, you understood at the time already, that we had to federate our forces and work to, collectively to make sure that you know, we're not policy takers, but we are policy influencers. Because otherwise, trust me, some of the reg new regulations and initiatives that are coming our way are going to burn and bite. And we should avoid that as much as possible. So, I mentioned that STSA is this kind of umbrella organization. We have about 170 members, Swiss based members, could be branches, of course, of multinationals. We have quite a few of those. Uh, and the focus is on physical training. Uh, what we do, of course, is we don't only interact with politicians or regulators. You know, that is obviously something a trade association such as SDSA will do, but we do a lot more than that. And we're also more than a club. You know, the club function in any organization is really important. You know, this is part of the reason why we're here. To a certain extent, we're here to network. We're here to discuss you know, the latest trends and developments. Uh, maybe identifying opportunities. When it comes to trade associations, we serve uh, as a club as well. We defend the interests uh, in Parliament uh, when we're facing administrations, to a certain extent also at the international level. But we also offer a number of services to our members. Uh, you know, we do salary surveys. We're offering uh, uh, s solutions for HR or pensions that are specific to our sector. And trust me, there's value in that. We also, of course, 
uh, coordinate working groups. Which, you know, I mentioned regulation, but there's also taxation. Uh, we will be hearing about trade finance in a bit. Uh, we also have a, a working group following you know, everything that has to do with implementation of Basel II and Basel III rules. So all of this is going on at the same time. So despite the fact that you know, organizations such as SDSA are relatively small, I mean, we only have a secretariat of half a dozen people, you know, we're here to leverage your expertise, uh, understand what the issues are as far as you're concerned, and then try to collectively work on those issues and develop positions that reflect the sector's best interests. Sometimes it's a bit difficult for traders to all of a sudden realize that their corporate interest might not be fully aligned with that of the sector. But that is just the reality. I think, uh, you know, you can't be selfish when you're representing a sector of 10,000 people and 500 companies. You know, so we have to be realistic also about, you know, to what extent you can take into account your very specific views and sites. Um, <coughs> Again, some of you might be familiar with what's been going on in Switzerland in, in, in the recent past. Um, maybe, does anybody here, uh, has anybody here heard about the Young Socialist Popular Initiative to ban foodstuffs? Could you raise your hand just to have an idea? Okay, so... Who wants to ban foodstuffs? Uh, just, sorry, speculation on foodstuffs, sorry. I, I was trying to abridge my speech here. Thank you for stopping that by the way. So, okay, so a fair number of you. So that was a big success for our sector. Okay, a lot of people didn't believe that the commodity trading sector was well enough organized to be able to defeat this initiative. Unfortunately, this, is, this was not the first time the sector, there had been an attempt to maybe over-regulate the sector, and it will not be the last either. We can already see the new battle lines being drawn up, and we will need each and every one of you uh, to contribute uh, one way or another, uh, maybe simply by relaying our messages, uh, because we have quite a battle on our hands. Um, and of course then there's the issue of public opinion. Uh, it's one thing dealing with politicians and decision makers. You know, These are people who, better or for worse, at least try to stay informed and have informed debates. With the general public, we're talking about emotions. <coughs> We're talking about things that are very subjective. Uh, and we have a very steep hill to climb as a sector. Because unfortunately, even though this initiative against speculation and foodstuffs was defeated, we still have bad press. And the general public still sees us, or as a sector, collectively, as the bad guys. And this is very, very, very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate that in a place like Geneva, where you have about, well, at least half of the Swiss commodity trading industry based here. The, 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 the score was you know, 55, 45, 60, 40, depends how you want to look at it. Um, you know, this means that even on our home turf, we have not been able to do a good job of representing faithfully what the sector is about, what your work is about, and the value we bring the public and how we help them lead the lives and the quality lifestyles they, they, they have come to appreciate. Okay? So again, a lot of work on our plates moving forward. Um, and I think, yes, this is where, I mean, you understand, you understood my thrust here, this is where STSA can really make a difference. So for those of you who are not already on board, I'm hoping you'll all be coming and to have a chat with me after this. Um, but I'm not here to bore you too much with SDSA. We have a program <laughs> that we need to follow. And uh, I think this morning's program focuses on different aspects of this cha changing landscape. Uh, you know, and again, uh, elected politicians have been reshaping the landscape quite a bit over the last year. Uh, and they've led us to figure out how to continue uh, doing our business. Um, so, you know, as an industry, it's very easy to, you know, stick our head in the sand or look away. Uh, but I think that is really not the, the, way, the appropriate way forward for us now. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we need to be able to factor in political and regulatory risks uh, into how we do our business. So 
So, uh, and then this morning's really topical here, you know, because whether we talk about uh, post sanctions, dispute resolutions, sort or of the impact of Basel II, uh, the consequences of the EU's uh, Mifid II legislation uh, on our sector, all these issues have uh, significant associated risks. And we'll be hearing about them this morning. Uh, what I'd like to say before uh, handing over the, the, the stand here to, you, to, to, to Matthew uh, is that as a public policy and public affairs specialist, um, I really, I'm really convinced that our discussion this morning will help shed greater light here and clarity on these uh, complex, uh, you might say, arcane issues. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. <coughs> you know, we need events such as Global Energy 2016, but we also need to you know, do the nitty gritty work day in, day out, and this is where you know, associations such as STSA come in. So without further ado, I'd like, you know, it's my pleasure to hand over to Matthew. I can see Matthew uh, Parrish from the Jim Jim Law over there. Um, so Matthew, I believe you're a partner with Jim and you'll take us through the new landscape for this for dispute sorry, resolution in the CIS. So thank you very much for joining us. The floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matthew Parrish. Um, about slightly less than two years ago, um, I set up a law firm here in Geneva, headquartered here, called the Gentian Law Group. It's my pleasure to appear before you today as the managing partner. What do we do? We're dispute resolution lawyers. Now you may think that's a service you're never going to want. And I assure you, you're absolutely wrong. One of the greatest mysteries, for I work in a much maligned profession, of course, lawyers, 